you so much, Franz, for taking the time to chat with me. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for the invitation. It's a great pleasure speaking with you. I pre- well, it, it's I really do appreciate it with this one. Uh, Dear Future Children is an incredible film. Um, there's some incredible footage, and and I love the stories that you're telling. Uh, really sort of brings some context, and and it's all around the world. I was wondering, where did you get the idea for this particular project? I think we as a core team, we really had a high fascination for young global modern activism. And we just definitely wanted to learn more about it. We wanted to learn more about the people on the front lines of these movements. Um, And when we did our research, we just realized that quite a few films and also, you know, some TV shows they spoke a lot about activism, but they didn't really speak with them. So that's something we wanted to change. We wanted to build a platform for these international voices. And we want to have, to, we want to have a in-depth look into, you know, what, what motivates them, um, what kind of struggles do they have? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's incredible. And I was wondering what it was like working with these particular young people? How did you find them? What struck you about them? I think, first of all, what struck me is that they all share the same motivation and the same energy for a better future. Um, We collaborated very, very closely with, you know, other young activists, NGOs, youth groups on the ground, also many journalists. So we reached out to them very, very carefully. And we had two elements that were especially helpful that have been especially helpful in building a good relationship with them and that is enough time and honesty so we had enough time to really get to know each other and we always communicated very honestly what the angle of the project is what exactly we are imagining what our goals with these with this project is um and so that's how we started off our collaboration that's how we got to know each other And I mean, you know, there are so many countries in which the young generation now is really standing up for a better future. And in many cases, like in Hong Kong, like in Chile, they're actually representing a democratic majority and they're using the protests on the streets as a last desperate opportunity to really make their voices heard. Yeah, see that that's so interesting. Um, you know, seeing seeing these youth around the world and their own, you know, with very different visions. I was wondering, what do you think? I because I, I know they're they're very different ideas and very different contexts. But what do you think justice looks like for for these young people? I think justice for them means a seat on the table, and that's the main um, reason and the main, I would say, origin of why they had to go on the streets in the first place, because they felt very, very unheard. Mm -hmm. Um, They felt that they have democratic majorities behind core issues that left them unheard. Um, So justice, I think for them, first of all, means a seat on the table, a right to, um, you know, to have a say when it comes to creating the future, because, you know, it's them who will be most affected by the decisions we are taking now. Yeah, yeah. So it's, and even the title of the film, Dear Future Children, it's like you've got the children of the adults talking about the future for their, it's, it's, it's really this interesting generational web. And I was wondering, what do you think the previous generation can learn from, from the current ones and, and maybe even the next? I think, first of all, what really struck me and impressed me as well is how well connected the young generation today is. Um, So for example, the Hong Kong movement, you know, learns from strategies and tactics um, which are being used in Chile. They are in constant contact with each other. They are organizing the solidarity protests in Europe, in the UK, in Germany, in London. Um, So that is, I think, very, very impressive. And they are also staying, you know, they're using every level of activism to make their voices heard. They have protests on the streets, surely, but they are also using, like we see in Chile, they're using street art, they're using social media, they're using, again, um, helpful contacts in Europe to make their voices heard there as well. And I think that's really something that is where we all can learn a lot from. 
yeah there there there's some real creativity there rather than i mean when we think of the protests we think of the street protests but there are these other aspects as well which which uh which i think are really interesting um one of the things about the film without I don't, I don't want to give necessarily anything away, but one of the things that really struck me about it is a heavy emphasis on the cost of this. We, we see and hear stories of characters who, there's my dog going to go. Uh, <laughs> we see and hear stories. Hey. Shush. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Sometimes she's got to interrupt. Um <laughs> enough but we see and we see and hear stories of 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 young people who just who who are killed um who are injured seriously people who are hurt in the in the as a cost to their activism i was wondering based on based on your conversations with them you guys built this incredible relationships um how did they weigh the importance of their fights versus the challenges we see them struggle with it Mm. I think that's a very interesting aspect for the project generally. Mm. When we first arrived at, let's say, the movement in Hong Kong, nobody was able to foresee the development. Quite a few told us that this will be a very, very um, successful democratic revolution here, and that we are really um, accompanying history in a positive way here. And I think one core goal of the project was to feature every single aspect that includes the loss of friends, that includes um, desperation, that includes facing challenges which are, you know, larger than life. And the one thing that keeps them going is persistence and is fear as well. I think a lot of you know, the main origin of their current braveness is actually fear, is being fearful of the future. The IPCC report, for example, showed that Hilda, um, you know, won't be able to raise her children in Uganda in 20 or 30 years' times because it will simply be too hot. Mm. She needs to move to another country if she really wants to um, found a family in the future, wants to create a family in the future. And I think that's a very powerful fear that will lead to a lot of braveness and a lot of persistence as well. Yeah. Uh, did you see, or how, did, rather I should say, how did you see them change throughout this process? This is quite a lengthy uh, period of time. I think the biggest development um, we were able to see was, was Hilda. Uh, mm -hmm. At first, Hilda was still quite hopeful that international governments, for example, will react to this crisis. Hilda was hopeful when she got invited to the C40 summit in Copenhagen. What she had to learn or what she learned though is you can't really rely on anybody else to do the work for you. If Hilda wants to change the future of Uganda, if Hilda wants to battle the consequences of climate change there, she, co she needs to do it completely on her own. She can't rely on anybody else. Um, that was very a very tough lesson for her to learn. The C40 summit in Copenhagen um, was ended without any declarations. It was a completely unnecessary event. Hilda was ashamed that they weren't able to reach anything. Um, and Hilda kind of realized afterwards what these summits are for. You know, she said, well, we are all listening to each other. We are all applauding each other. We are all giving a powerful speeches, but there's no concrete action taken afterwards. And that's something that she would like to tackle um, specifically, specifically when it comes to her home country, Uganda. Wow. Wow. That's great. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I was wondering, like, the, you've, you've got some incredible footage. Was it really difficult to, to acquire that? Was it uh, to be a part of that? I know you said you built really strong relationships with your, your people. I mean, especially filming at the front line or also filming um, during moments, you know, when, when Ryan spoke to the parents of um, a boy who just died in the protest. Um, these were the most challenging moments for us. We were very well prepared from a physical standpoint. We had a lot of training. We spoke to a lot of people on the ground. But I think there is 
something that you can't really prepare for. And that is, you know, seeing people die at the front line, seeing people getting shot at. Um, we also were shocked by the level of violence we received from the police. Um, and surely these were, you know, the biggest challenges and staying concentrated, staying focused on filming, on the project um, was something that was only reachable or was only possible because we had such a powerful and strong team behind the project. Yeah, that's, a, how, did, how was that, like, what was that like for you, for you as, as a filmmaker? I mean, that's, that's got to be so, so difficult to see. It is, it is. And I remember, I remember that I uh, was visiting a, uh, an event in, in London at the Frontline Club where a war photographer spoke about her experiences as well. And I just asked her, you know, I just lived through quite a lot of challenging moments there and I saw people die. I was just wondering, how are you coping with that? Like, what's your strategy in, in, in getting back into your normal life? And she was just like, yeah, whenever I think about that, I just go to the bar and I drink. And, you know, I, at that time, I was a little bit offended. I was like, this is a serious question, but I, it took me a few months to realize that this was a serious answer as well. And that doesn't mean that our team turned into alcoholics. That just means that these moments will accompany us. And that will also be a, a motivation factor for future projects. Um, we now were able to accompany and see many moments that um, were horrible on you know, many different levels. And um, I'm sure it will have a great impact on us and on our future work as well. Yeah, yeah, that's gotta be so challenging for you. And I mean, the, the cultures that, that you're filming and you know, the areas that you're filming, um, I, I can never say, and I wanna be careful how I say this, but I, I don't wanna say that they're, they're, they're more accustomed to it, but they're not, I, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to be insensitive, but I mean, to, to see that for the first time, must be truly, truly shocking. Um, as we as we start to wrap up, Franz, uh, I, the, just a simple question is this, is what do you hope that, that people get from seeing the film? First of all, I hope that um, as many people as possible will just see the film and will listen to the stories of these three protagonists. I think that their voices their stories and you know the consequences let's say of the national security law that's something that affects them but it affects us as well um, i hope that it will be easier for future filmmakers to make similar projects especially here in germany um, it was very very challenging to make a project like this because you know many tv channels were saying you know this is this is not really about germany we don't really have german protagonists here so it's very very difficult for us to see a future to see a place for this film and we just want to show on an international level that there are there is an, an audience for projects like these and these are stories and issues that we should speak about yeah these are stories that need to be told uh, and they're they're stories that when told hopefully will bring about change uh thank you so much for your time franz i really appreciate it it's a wonderful film uh, it's in, uh, my understanding is it's in some theaters now, but it'll be available on VOD on the 29th. Is that? I, I think that is correct. Yes, it's definitely in some theaters now. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for the time, chat. I really wish you the best. Thank you so much. It was a great pleasure speaking with you and likewise.